So imagine yourself in this situation. You've got a WordPress hosted website and all of a sudden a customer has gone to contact you through the contact form on that site. But all of a sudden you've not received any email or notification, anything at all to notify you that they've tried to get in touch with you, which obviously can be quite critical if it is maybe a business website or just a personal project. Now I'm going to be showing you how you can actually resolve this issue using a service called SMTP to go. Now SMTP to go haven't sponsored this video in any way at all. I'm just simply want to show off their services because I've put all of my own personal clients that I websites that I look after onto this service and it's just been very reliable and never let me down. So just before we do go ahead, a quick introduction anyway. My name is Matthew from Matthew's Tech Hub. Hope you're doing well. And without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. So as you can see, we're now on the WordPress dashboard. Now, if you don't have access to WordPress, again, you will obviously need an administrative account to be able to manage the features that we're going to be adding to the site to fix this problem. So what we're going to be doing is on the left-hand side, we just jump into plugins and then go to add a new plugin. Now, before we do download the plugin, there is two ways I'm going to be showing you that you can implement this service. So the first way is you can actually download the SMTP to go's official plugin, which is the second method. Or the first method is using a plugin called WPSMTP, which is a plugin that I've personally used a lot and it's generally been all right. But I know that SMTP to go have not long recently released their own WordPress plugin as well. Um, and again, that's also got very good feedback. Now, both methods will work. It's up to you which way you want to do it. The second method will be quicker, but the first method is if you want to do it sort of more um, sort of more manually configuration. So let's do the first one. So what we'll do on the right hand side, we've got search plugins. Just click on this and just type in WPSMTP and then just hit enter and then give it a second just to search the plugin store. And then on the, as you can see now on the top left, we've now got WP SM, uh, sorry, WP mail SMTP by WP forms, a little, uh, I think it's like a pigeon or a bird or something. That's the one that you want to be using. So we now just click on install now. Now it may take a couple of minutes just depending on your host and how fast your uh, server connection is, but that's pretty, pretty quick. So it goes through straight away. And all you're gonna do is click on activate. Give that a second to activate. And it will then be brought to this screen here. So this is now where we can actually start configuring and setting up the plugin. Now, what we need to do is we now actually need to go over to SMTP to go to set up an account before we can get this set up. So let's jump straight over to there. So to get access to SMTP to go, you just simply go to smtp2go.com. But again, all the links will be down in the description box down below. And I'll also put a banner on screen, which will pop out now in the very corner. Now, once you're on their website, all you need to do is click on this green uh, sign up box just in the top right corner. It will then ask you which plan you want to do. Now, if you are not going to be sending that many emails through your site, again, up to a thousand. So if you're just basically using it as like a basic submissions for a site, again, that will be fine. It is free. Um, so you can do that. And you can you're also you are also limited up to 200 emails a day. But I never see any sites hit that limit for small sites anyway. If you maybe got a bigger site, you can go to the starter plan. And if you've got a large website, which is quite busy, you can go to the professional and that allows you to send up to 100,000 emails a month, which is quite a lot, really. So I'm going to be using the free plan in this case. So it's going to go click on Get Started right here. So once you click Get Started, it will then ask you to start your free account. So you're going to type in your work email. So just bear in mind, they, they do say work email. It just basically means you have to use an email that is using your own domain. You can't use a free email service like outlook.com, helpmail.com, or gmail.com address. It has to be at your own domain name. So I set up an account for this for the demo. So it's going to be smtp 2 go at matthewstechhub.com. And we can click Continue. That will then process. So let's give that a second there. And it's then now going to ask you to enter your full name, company, and a password. So I'm just going to enter that now. I'll be back in just a sec. So once you've entered your company email and details and all your information, again, it will then send you an email to your inbox asking you just to confirm the account. So let's now jump over to the inbox of the account that I've got set up so I can show you that email. Okay, so this is now the email account that I've set up just for the demonstration of today's video. So as you can see, we've now got an email saying activate your SMTP to go account. She's so going to simply click on this email. And on the right hand side, when it loads in just a second, it will then give you a link to or a button to activate your account, which you can see right here. So what we need to do is just click on this button right here. And then that will then activate your SMTP to go account. So it will take a couple of minutes. Sometimes it can take a bit of time, depending on how busy their end is. But usually leave this window open again, and then it will take you straight through. So we're back in just a second once it's done now. Okay, so as you can see now, we're now actually in the SMTP to go dashboard. So this will be the screen that you'll be taken to after you've created your account. Now, what you need to do is you've got these steps here, which is all nicely put together quite neatly here. So the next step we need to do is we need to add a verified sender. So all we need to do is click on this green button just right here. 
and then give that a second to load. And then you'll then be given this page here. So it's going to ask you if you want to set up a sender domain or a single sender, single sender email. I can't say the word properly there. So um, what you need to do is on this page, so there's it's it's up to you which way you want to do it. So if you do a sender domain, that means you're adding the domain to the platform and then you can actually create multiple accounts under that domain if you wish to. That's the way that they recommend and that's also the way that I also recommend as well because it's very easy. Or you can also set up a single sender email. So it allows you to send uh, emails from an individual email address if you wish. But I just prefer setting up the domain because you can just manage that anyway. So if you just go into add a sender domain, and you're then going to enter your domain name. So in this case, I'm going to use matthewstechhub.com and then click continue. And you'll then be taken to this page here. So this is now where you need to add the DNS records to your domain. Now, as you can see, I'm actually using the Cloudflare, uh, I'm actually using Cloudflare as my DNS provider. So I'm going to have to add these records into Cloudflare. So let's jump over to Cloudflare and add those records. Okay, so now as you can see, I'm in the Cloudflare dashboard. Now, again, depending on who your DNS registration or management company is, you may need to just go and double check that. So if you're using something like a service like GoDaddy, you'll obviously you'll maybe go do it directly in GoDaddy. Or if you're using um, your, an individual your website host again you may have to do it in there as well but i use cloudflare just because it's a great platform and it's very quick as well so what we're going to do is we need to add those records which are on the other page so if we just jump back to that other tab here all of the records are actually cname records so as you can see we've got the value here and then obviously sorry the host name and then we've got the value right here so what we need to do if we just jump back into cloudflare now so if we just go to add a record so type is going to be cname and then the name obviously is going to copy that from here from the host name and then go back into Cloudflare, so paste that into there, and then copy the value, which is the one after it, just right here. Go back into Cloudflare, and then we'll just paste that into there. And again, you do need to turn off the proxy status if you are using Cloudflare, because they do recommend that you do this. So just turn that off just by clicking that little toggle. And then click Save. And that's it. And then we'll do the same again for the next two records as well. So now you can see I've now added all three records. So I've got the C name one here, C name there, and the C name there as well. So that's all them done. So what you now need to do is you just jump now back into the SMTP to go portal and just hit verify in the bottom left corner. It should then verify the records. Now sometimes it can take a bit of time depending on how fast your DNS propagation will go through. Again, it all varies. I know Cloudflare, as you saw there, it says they've all got a green tick. That's really quick, but I know some providers can take a bit of time. So if you do click on verify and it doesn't say, and it says one of them is wrong or it hasn't, hasn't obviously updated yet, don't worry, just give it a bit more time and it will eventually go through. So now obviously we've added all the uh, records here. Now what we can do is we just hit back just right here as you can see, the domain is now saying as verified. So what we now need to do is we now need to actually need to create an SMTP user. So if we just jump into SMTP users right here, and then just click on continue. And if we then go to add SMTP user in the top right corner, as you can see, it's now going to ask you what you want to set as your username, password, and a description. And there's a couple of other settings you can go through as well. So you've got unsubscribe footer. So maybe if you're using this service to send marketing emails, you can add that but I'm not going to be doing that. Also, it's going to be setting up just for a contact form. You've got tracking and status. So again, if you want to have click tracking, see if people have clicked and opened the email. And you've also got some advanced options as well, like auditing and bounce notifications. So we just go back into the SMTP details section. Uh, I'm going to leave all these de details as default just today's video, but don't worry, they won't work. So if you do try using them, it won't work after this video. So if we now just jump back into our WordPress website and click on let's get started on the WP Mail SMTP. Now, I would have noticed that they have recently added support for SMTP to go with this plugin, but again, I still prefer doing things manually because it's just worked absolutely fine for me. So if we now to go to other SMTP at the bottom, click save and continue, it's then going to ask you for the SMTP host. So the host, if we just jump back into the SMTP to go website, all the details for connecting via SMTP are in the top right corner. So if we just so the server obviously is going to be this one here, which is mail.smtp to go. So if we just copy this and then paste that into the SMTP host. Encryption, I prefer using SSL, so select SSL. And then you then got to make sure you use the correct port. So again, the SSL port is available on 465, 8465, and 443. So I normally just use 465, which is fine. So we now just jump back over to here, make sure that says 465, which it does. And you then also got the auto TLS as well, which again, I normally have that on, so that's absolutely fine. Now you've got this section here which says authentication. So this is now the username and the password. So you need to actually make sure that you do uh, put this information in here after you've created the user. So if we just jump back into the users tab again, and we're going to copy the username here. But again, obviously you can change that to anything you like along with the password as well. 
So if I now just copy this and paste that into the username, and obviously then we've got the password, which is this one here, copy that, paste it into there. And you then, if you scroll down a bit more, you've got the from name and then also you've got the from email. So maybe you want your, if you are using it for a contact form, again, you can use anything you want. Now you've added this, now you've actually added your domain into SNTP to go. So you can have maybe like no reply or you can have a contact form at or, you know, website at. Again, I'm just going to use no reply. So if I just use no dash reply at matthewstechhub.com and then the from name, I want it to be saying um, uh, maybe Matthews Tech Hub website. I'm going to force that as well. And also you can force the from email as well, which means it will use this email no matter what, unless obviously you've got um, a, a custom configuration with the contact form plugin itself. So at this stage, I'm just going to hit save and continue. And then if we then jump back into the SMTP to go, we do also need to add this account. So if you just go to add SMTP user now in the bottom left hand corner, give that a second and that's it and that's now as you can see it's now been successfully added uh, into the platform so if we now jump back into our smtp to go website and if we then just go to uh where well, you can obviously enable some of these options here i normally just untick them so i don't need i don't want these weekly emails just don't want that but obviously you can't untick these ones because they're default just click save and continue and again if we then just go to skip this step skip this step as well and it's now just going to do a quick check just to make sure it's all working and as you can see, it now says it's all working. Now, if you want to just double check to make sure the emails are coming through, if you scroll down, you'll see you've got this button here that says send a test email. If you click on this, and you can actually send a test email. So let's send a test email to the, to the account that I set up as an email account. So I'm going to do SMTP to go. And again, just click send email. And again, that's all gone through. So now let's go and double check the mailbox and see what we've received. So this is the mailbox that I've created and sent a test email to. So as you can see, we've now got the test email and it's come straight into the inbox. So if we just open up that email there, uh, just allow this here because it's trying to block it. And there we go. And as you can see, congrats, test email sent successfully. So that is now configured. So if you now actually go and uh, do a test email use or even just do a, a quick test using your contact form submission, you, your submission should then go straight through to your inbox. So the second method I'm going to show you guys is I'm going to show you now how you can actually configure it using SMTP to go's own plugin. So if you want to do that method, let's jump straight over to that section of the video now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we actually need to get uh, SMTP to go's own plugin. So you can either go to their site and download it, or the easy way just to do it, which I'm going to show you, is on your WordPress admin dashboard. Again, if you just go into plugins and then go into add new plugin, you can just go to search plugins again in the top right corner. And if you just type in SMTP to go and just hit enter. And again, that'll just do a quick search here. And as you can see, obviously you've got the one which is, which you've just set up in the first method, but you want to actually use this one here, which is SNTP to go for WordPress, email made easy. Just click on install now. And I give that a second there just to download and install that. And then once that's done, just simply click activate. And then we'll now jump into configuring the plugin itself. So what you need to do is click on the settings just right here. And as you can see, this is now the settings for this plugin specifically. So obviously you've got the option here to enable the plugin. You then need to set an API key, send an email address, and send a name. So now let's obviously get this all set up and configured. So if we just go to enable this plugin just right here. And we need to obviously now get our API key. So let's now jump back into SMTP to go and go grab that API key. Okay, so now we're back in the SMTP to go dashboard. Now, obviously in the first method, I did show you how to create an SMTP to go account and how to add your domain and configure that. So if you have missed that, just quickly skip back and you can go check on how to do that. Now, what we need to do is um, on the left-hand side, if we just go into the sending tab, just right here, and then you need to go into the API key. So if we just click on this, and it will now ask you uh, if your API keys allow you to integrate SMTP to go with your other software, that's great. That's what we want to do. So if you just click on continue, and then in the top right corner, you've got this add API key. So if we just click on this, and then straight away, it will then generate you an API key. It won't show you the full API key, just obviously for security, but you can just go to click on this copy button right here. But if you do need to configure anything else as well, you can also have a look at the settings under here. So you've got permissions. Uh, so again, you can obviously really customize it, you know, for the loud senders. You've got unsubscribe footer, you've got tracking and status, and you've also got some advanced options as well. But I'm going to leave everything as default. I'm just going to show you how to add this into the plugin directly for WordPress. So if we now just copy this API key right here. 
jump back into our WordPress site and then just paste it straight into there. Obviously, as you can see, we can see the full API. And then if you go to sender email address and sender name, so again, this is obviously the sender that you, or the web, the email that you want this website to actually show when uh, someone submits a contact form. So maybe when someone submits a contact form, they might get a, an email back from your site, obviously just confirming their submission. That's obviously what the email address will show. So for example, I would probably have like no dash reply at matthewstechhub.com. And then the sender name I might either have as myself or maybe just Matthews Tech Hub website like that. So before you do actually hit save down here, we actually need to create the API key. So if we jump back into the SMTP to go, and again, you can also add a description if you want to. So I normally sometimes uh, add a description like website. So if you use it for multiple websites or even multiple services, um, obviously, or like, you know, because also you can link this with a printer as well, for example. Um, but I would maybe just put website into here and then just hit save. And then once that's saved, that's it. So the API key has now been generated and is now live. So if we now just jump back into our WordPress site, just hit save down here in the bottom left. So that, that's all gone through. Um, and as you can see, um, you can obviously do a test as well. So at the top, you've got test and stats. So if we just actually click on test right here. We can then do another test to see if the email goes through. So I'm actually going to do a test. So let's just do the email address which I set up for today's video, which is SNTP to go at matthewstechhub.com. And again, email name, I'm just going to put, I'm just going to put Matthew, send test email. Give that a second there just to process that test email. And there you go. So it'll now say success. The test message was sent. So if we now just jump back over to our inbox, which I'll do now. As you can see, we've now got the test email. So it says test email via SMTP to go WordPress plugin. So if we click on that and you'll then get a little message saying success. You successfully set up your plugin. So that's great. So what will happen now is if you are using a contact form on your website, it will just automatically use the SMTP to go plugin to start sending emails. But hope that's helped out guys anyway. Hopefully it's fixed the issue. If it has, Please smash that like button as it will get this video into the YouTube algorithm. Please also hit that subscribe button as well as we're on the way to 2,000 subscribers and we're nearly reaching that milestone, which would be great to try and achieve by the end of this year. And also, please also leave your comments down in the comment section down below. You can also check me out on social media via Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. But as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.